Hunting for a full English Kai builds up an appetite, stalking a new block of ground, plus offers up some campfire lockdown learning. Oh, that was the one that was on the fire. <laughs> <laughs> We've got ducks in the dark. I'm with Matt Turley in the West Country using the force to film teal flighting. We have another shooting lesson with world champion shot Sam Green and Wayne's giving away the Evo catapult he used to pull off that amazing 35-yard squirrel shot. Plus, Bargain Hunter, we point you in the direction of a Hakila and Sealand clearance sale. And of course, we have news and hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. This morning we are mostly after deer that are hard of hearing. It's only a small bit but it holds a lot of deer so we have to try to be as quiet as we possibly can. The serenity of the beautiful crisp fresh dawn is broken by Kai Grasshopper Ap Bryn crunching his way through the Sussex countryside. So yeah, so we're gonna now we're gonna go from this woodland to the field. Hopefully, spot something in there. If not, then we'll go back down into the plantation, and then I'm sure there'll be at least we'll see something. But it's so tricky today because, like I said, the ground is like walking on cornflakes, and um, it makes it so much more difficult. It's a new bit of ground, but with Kai's catering company Game and Flames more of a flicker at the moment, thanks to COVID he's not had much need to take deer off it. So for the wedding and the events industry, like, like I do, um, we had zero business last year, next to zero anyway. A couple of un like small events for under 30 people. Obviously with the vaccines coming out now and everything else, and you know, we're hoping for kind of May, June, but it's been kind of catastrophic for the industry really. So for me, I, a lot of the deer I shoot, I use in a business. If I don't have a business, I can't use a deer, so luckily I've got a couple of outlets that I sell it on. If I can't get rid of it, then I, sim I simply won't shoot it. There's, there's, you know, there's no point. Six or seven deer. Kai is a thermal convert and is constantly scanning with his Pulsar XP38 spotter. However, he didn't spot this doe. Back up the track and we have a close encounter with a roebuck. Just what mornings like this are made for. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Especially in that frost, in that background. But like, it, it was coming towards us, didn't really. It wasn't quite sure what was going on. We don't touch a row on this ground because there's not that many. It'd be nice to have a few more row back here. That's the first roadback I've seen the last time there's a road hoe. So that's really, really encouraging. We complete a circle and discover this group pretty much where we'd started. It's not a shot Kai wants to take. He'd be shooting upwards and through the trees. Best left for another day, as it turns out, another week. This time, Kai is feeling uber confident. So much so that he's brought along his grill for a stalker's breakfast to make up for blanking the week before. Before we have a chance to say sunny side up, there is a doe on the deck. That's deer stalking for you. Sometimes things just don't go to plan. They are wild animals at the end of the day. You know, nothing follows a follows a schedule or routine, so, and it's just moments like this, you've got to just take your chance when you get there. I'm just going to make this rifle safe, and then what we'll do, we'll drag her to the, to the track, and then we'll perform the gralic there, so just keep all, everything intact on the inside. I wouldn't normally do this with a very heavy deer, because obviously I will bend the poles, but she's not too big. I'll say she's like a, actually a perfect eating size. That's probably one I'll take from my own freezer. Now, having received a 
meat grinder for Christmas. No tittering in the cheap seats. David is keen to ask how Kai does his venison burgers, as he's not quite got the mix right. So I've still got some venison to mince up. OK. So Is that from the deer I got you? Yes. Oh, right, wow. So it was delicious. First batch, we went with some pork cheeks to put in there as well for a bit of fat. Yep. OD'd on the pork cheeks. Too much. Yeah. And then... I spoke to Crowey and Crowey said he doesn't put anything in apart from salt and pepper. That's right. You could do a thing called smash burgers, which is which is kind of a bit on trend, but you could put them into balls, put them onto a searing hot grill and press them down with like a, a spatula or something or whatever. But normally it's like you can buy these kind of presses and literally just a few minutes on each side, flip it over so it'll have a nice colour on it, smack a bit of cheese, I like a bit of gouda or something like that. And then what we'll do when that melts through, we can have a couple of minutes and take that off. But it has to be as thin as possible because if it's too thick, it, kind of, it can kind of almost dry out and you're cooking it for longer as well. But you want that cheese to give it a little bit of fat. You want that kind of the salt and pepper to kind of bring out the flavors and it don't take that long at all and put it in like a nice brioche bun, toasted brioche bun. We've not even had breakfast yet and I'm, star <laughs> I'm starving. Back to the truck for that stalker's breakfast. First, Kai is going to perform a suspended gralic with a new nifty bit of kit from B&D Stalking. So this, this is what I did last time. Does it have to go that high? Well, to be honest, that, that's dead dead. I was just picking some out of that. It doesn't have to go that high. It was a lot easier last the other week when I... <laughs> Didn't have someone looking at you. <laughs> It did work perfectly fine, like first time last. <laughs> Maybe I, <just laughs> I thought you were going to like just throw it up like a grappling hook. Yeah, because that would make another funny video, wouldn't it? <laughs> it will be, it'll be fine. What are you going to say now, David? Hey! Well My technique was wrong, but I've got it right now. Finally, and incredibly without injury, we have the winch in place. So I'll just tie that off. So do you think this is sort of like don't leave home without it type kit now, this Grelick. Um, I think a lot more people are going towards this just because, like, what should be important is, obviously, how you handle the carcass if it's going from field to fork. It just makes it a little bit neater as well. In no time we have a clean deer, a fire on the go, coffee on the boil, and fillets to be seasoned. Uh, the plan is this morning, we're going to have a bit of a stalker's breakfast. Now, traditionally, a stalker's breakfast would have like liver, so you would fry up the liver with some eggs. But what we're going to do, we're going to do the inside fillets, which to me is even nicer. I mean, I'm not a big fan of liver anyway. So we're going to do eggs, steak and eggs this morning. And what I do for the family back at home, I get like tortillas, I cut them into triangles and fry them off. I then put that in like crisps with like seasoning at the end. It's called tahin or tajin, however you say. And it's really nice and I got that from Mex Grocer online. So I get all my Mexican shopping from Mex Grocer. And it's pretty much next day delivery. There is something very special about cooking in the great outdoors, and our big boy's stalker's breakfast is something to be savoured. Thank you, Kai. Salivating stuff. Now, as a bonus for any parents out there stuck for something to do with the children during lockdown, we've made a short film with home economics teacher Mr At Bryn making campfire popcorn. Link is in the description below. Now, for someone who is both poppy and corny, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. 
There's doubt over what the English government means in its latest statement on Muirburn. Natural England says it plans to introduce a licensing system for burning heather over blanket bog, even though, as this film from Tomatin Moreland Group shows, Muirburn won't melt a Mars bar. Meanwhile, this film from Peak District Moreland Group shows controlled Muirburn over frozen water. The water remains frozen. It looks like the government has got it wrong about the damage it believes Muirburn does to peat and, instead of looking at the evidence, has been listening to celebrities. Following Natural England's pronouncement, both sides are claiming victory, with Wild Justice saying it has achieved a Muirburn ban, while some sheets point to loopholes that will allow them to continue to manage moors for grouse and other wildlife by burning heather. The GWCT is disappointed with the sweeping nature of the regulation and is concerned that the rules are an attack on landowners. More often than not, they're only too delighted to change how they manage their lands, but they want to know why they should be doing it and what's going to be the impact. And quite frankly, if we can't explain that, we shouldn't be telling people to do it. The 2020-2021 driven shooting season ended in confusion last week in the UK, with many police forces allowing driven shooting to go ahead. And he's tried to disrupt the shoot in the home counties. While the shoot had permission to get together, the antis did not. Shooters, however, were surprised to see clear-up days advertised on social media. Plenty of walked-up shooting took place. It's all over now, and the season that never was came to an end on Monday, with high hopes for next season, as some of the bigger commercial shoots report good levels of bookings. Bird flu has hit a shoot in Wales. A gamekeeper in Anglesey was catching up hens for laying last week and noticed that some were dying, as many as 10% of them in 24 hours. Other birds were hunched up looking ill, but there was no coughing or sneezing. A vet from St David's Game Bird Services went to the shoot, identified neurological signs, what looked like seizures, plus other symptoms, and diagnosed H5N8 avian influenza and informed EFRA. There's now a restriction zone of three kilometres and a surveillance zone of 10 kilometres. That will remain probably for about four to six weeks. The estate is, or Anglesey as a whole, is, is very um, populated with wildfowl, you know, sort of on the, on the um, coast and whatnot. So we, we suspect that's probably where it's come from. The government is looking at ways of banning 14 to 17 year olds using air guns unsupervised. It's among a raft of tweaks to gun laws that Minister Kit Malthouse is trying to drive through Parliament. Basque is running an email campaign to make him see sense. I'm asking people to spend five minutes of their time to go to the link that BASC has provided and fill in their own personal version of the consultation. The more that we have, the more governments don't think they can just run roughshod over people. What I would like to see is one, one message and many, many voices delivering it. A judge has hit a deer stalker selling venison with a £6,000 fine. Derry City and Straban District Council called in an environmental health team after police raided Trevor Ganner's property in County Trone and found 12 deer carcasses there. Under investigation for failing to comply with food safety and traceability regulations, Gannon admitted offences at Straban Magistrates Court. District Judge McGarity imposed fines totalling £6,000, along with costs of £146. Almost all hospitality businesses in Scotland are eligible for Covid grants, but not hunting and shooting businesses. It's the second round of the Strategic Framework Business Fund, where the Scottish Government hands out thousands of pounds to firms hit by coronavirus lockdowns. And, like the first round, it has left out country sports tourism businesses. Basque has written to the Scottish Government to complain. A Scottish Government agency responsible for stopping deer road traffic accidents may be causing those accidents. Forestry and Land Scotland says in recent newspaper stories that deer-related road accident statistics are climbing steadily. But it's FLS deer management that's driving deer onto the roads. We have shown on Field Sports Channel how FLS put up fencing that carefully funnels deer onto rural A roads, which at this time of year are covered in delicious molasses to aid gritting, creating accident black spots. Now FLS claims in reports in newspapers that it uses deer culling and fencing to keep down the deer numbers. Italian gum maker Beretta has bought British gum maker Holland & Holland. Owned by luxury brand Chanel, Holland & Holland has shops in London and Dallas. 
Their future is in doubt because so does Breta, as well as shops in Paris, Milan, Moscow, New York, Memphis and Buenos Aires. Holland, Holland has one of London's premier shooting grounds located west of the capital in Middlesex. Beretta Holding confirms it has acquired 100% of the 186-year-old London gunmaker and the deal takes effect from the 1st of February 2021. It won't say how much it paid. A safari operator has hit out at media attacks on hunting tourism. Mike Angelides of McCallum Safaris in Tanzania says that if it weren't for his clients, wildlife in his hunting area would die out. He is funding research into the subject and has put out these shots of his hunting area from the air, showing wildlife-free farming areas and his own wildlife-rich wooded hunting areas. As a hunting area, obviously it's ha it, it makes it has income for the government, so so they 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 are um, they they protect it as well, um, and they do do a great, great job. Although you know money is, is not as much as it used to be, so they can't really they don't really concentrate on anything outside the hunting areas because there's no one in there for them to look at off after it for. A Peter anti-hunting campaign has backfired. In November 2020, the activist group People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals released what it claimed was an expose connecting South African President Cyril Ramaphosa with hunting tourism operator Fala Fala Wildlife. That media has now forced the president to come out strongly in favour of hunting tourism. And this month, he writes about his support for big game hunting in African Outfitter magazine. Thanks to Richard Walton for the story. A huge campaign by hunters has killed off a bear hunting ban in California. Organised by an Instagrammer called Shadow Trekker Adventures, more than 27,000 people signed a petition to stop the bear hunting ban going ahead. Shooting a large animal with an air rifle can now get you in the record books. Safari Club International has added an air gun category to its SCI record book. Hunters submitting records in the air gun category will be eligible for SCI World Hunting Awards. Pictured is Sam Wood, an American air gun hunter with a Texas Audad that he hopes will be the first entry in the book. Previously, hunters could only submit air gun entries under the rifle category, but it's bad news for rat and rabbit shooters. The records are for big game only. And finally, two hunters in Siberia got stuck up a tree. They were forced to climb the tree and wait until an Amur tiger finished eating its kill. The world's largest big cats can climb trees, but this tiger wasn't hungry. Lucky hunters. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, normally I take this opportunity to remind you that the Field Sports Nation pays for our news coverage to thank them and to welcome new members. But because of David's appeal in last week's show, numbers have doubled in a week and there are too many to run across the screen. So thanks to all of you for joining. And later in the show, Wayne Martin will give the rest of our viewers a good reason to join. Now, Sam Green explains how to avoid shooting over a high crosser. Okay, so what have we actually got here? So we've got a long left to right crossing target, probably representing a pheasant that would be over your next neighbour. It's a nice long high crossing target at the moment. Perfect. So what we've done is a little adjustment with uh, Phil's gun. So if you shut the gun, Phil, for me, why uh, Phil was missing this target is if you go to where you were going to shoot the target for me, Phil, bring the gun back, okay? So if you come around this side, we can see that the gun is there. When we say pull and keep the gun there, the target comes a lot higher than the, than the actual gun. The target doesn't run into the barrel. So at this point, if we watch the target all across, at your kill point where you're going to shoot the target, the target's next move is to drop. So if you're starting lower than the target and then having to come up to a target that's about to drop, you end up shooting over the top. You're cutting an angle up to the target. So by bringing Phil's hold point higher up on line with the target, now he's actually on line with the target for a start. But just explain how you realised that because you, you did the shot in reverse and you got Phil to take the shot and then you took him back to where he started. Yeah, so for me, I, I'm looking down Phil's gun, uh, standing back here, I'm looking down Phil's gun. I can see where his gun is holding. I can see the clay is actually coming 
well over the top of the gun. And then you can see his gun cutting up to the target. So we'll do it. Um, so if you shut the gun and we'll go back low again, so you can see, the see his gun is too low. Oh. And now he's having to mount up and come up to the target and across. So by bringing the hole point up higher now, Phil, and then going back to your hole point, oh. Now he's just doing one motion. He's actually in line with the target and running with it. Perfect. Before you were talking about, again, the sound of the trap. Yeah. And you mentioned about almost counting. Are you, would you count for this one? You hear the trap? Uh, there's not enter? enough time. So if that trap was a lot further back um, and you can hear the trap and there's a big delay before you actually see the target, Again, we, won't, we only want to move on sight. We don't want to move, move in on sound. So if the trap's a long way and we can't actually see it, we can hear the trap go off. Um, so then we can count that target in. We can pull, we hear the trap, we can go one, two, three, before it actually appears. So once you've loaded your gun, you shut, you can go to here, go to your hold point, pull, we can count to three, and on that three, we know that target should be there. Instead of the surprise of waiting or juddering, we know that on three, one, two, three, that target's going to come out. But this target, we don't have to do it with. We can actually see the target nearly from the sound of the trap. But we still wouldn't move the gun until we actually see the target, because we only want to flow with the target. Thank you, Sam. Now, after David explained about our Field Sports Nation membership plans, more than 300 of you joined up. Thank you again. Part of that membership offer are the competitions and we kick off with our first for 2021. Here's Wayne from Caddyshack. Oh, that's it. He's about to drop. There he goes. Done. Thank you. Right, we had a great morning's hunting out with David. Um, thanks to Matt. Uh, but if you want to win yourself the Evo that we've been using today, the Caddyshack Clipped Evo, you win this exact one that we've done all the hunting with today. All you've got to do is, like myself, uh, join up to the Field Sports Nation, become a member, and uh, you'll be in with a chance to win this Evo. David and Charlie obviously travel up and down the country on a weekly basis, daily basis, to uh, bring the best in field sports, and uh, it's a good way to give something back. And it's the only way you're going to be able to win one of these, or win this exact one. Thank you, Wayne. If you want to be in with a chance of winning that, you need to write the special word below this week's episode of Field Sports Extra. And how do you find out what the special word is? You have to watch Field Sports Extra. And how do you watch Field Sports Extra? You become a member. So please sign up at fieldsportschannel.tv slash membership, link in the description below. It's a pound a week. Now, another thing we're trying to do is dig out retail bargains. In Field Sports Extra, the members are getting money off thermal spotters this week. And here's one that's open to everyone. The Cleaning Country Store website is having a Sealand and Harkila clearance sale. There's a link to it on the screen and in the description below. Staying on kit, there's a new episode of Field Tester Out, the show presented by David that looks into shooting and hunting kit so you don't have to. Tim Pillbeam has gathered a baker's dozen stalkers to see if copper bullets work for them and, more importantly, on deer. We have reviews on kit from the new Leica entry-level Amplus Scope to the Bagara B13 takedown and what do you do when you get nail gun pellets stuck in your barrel? Johnny Muston has the answer. There's a link to the show in the description below. Next, shooting under the moon, I head out to record lockdown recreational exercise on a puddle in Somerset after Teal. It's a small piece of water that appears here every year, so like late October, early November. And over the past couple of years, we just found that a few teal and mallard that are in the area happen to drop in here of an evening. So we're just here this evening now to see, see what turns up. And you've got your socially distanced friends here? I have, yes. He's somewhere in the distance. <laughs> I mean, do you see anything else? Pintail, would you? We don't seem to get anything like that this far inland here. We're just like, a little bit too far away from the Somerset levels. The odd Canada goose comes, comes through every now and then, but it is mainly teal and mallard that show up here. We know where the flight line is, where they come in, so we're just going to hope for the best tonight. It is our daily exercise, yeah, yeah. We've been here today, obviously doing crow control and that for the farmer, which you know we're authorised to do. So we're we're sticking to the the guidelines. So saying, Matt and Nigel set up under the hedge and await developments. 
They've been keeping their eyes on this splash for weeks, watching duck pitching into it, and this is the evening they've been looking forward to. Got one. I got one out in the front. Yeah, I just didn't know which one to go for. I had so many in front of me. He's down. No, I heard that thud on the field. I nearly hit that with a gun barrel. That was an hour's duck shooting, including this heart in mouth moment when a pack of jackdaws go over at head height. I think we've picked up seven possibly eight it was a very good show of birds actually <laughs> it's it surprised us you know that one big bunch there of like i don't know yeah. how many 20 25 possibly and you know they all came into that tiny little piece of water and it just goes to show that you don't need vast acreages of water to attract a good number of ducks it only lasted half an hour but you know what a fantastic bit of shooting for half an hour for your statutory recreation what more could you want? Thank you, Matt and Nigel. Now, from the smallest splash to the big wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Thanks to Claire Tucker for sending in her cousin's channel, Norfolk Fowlers, in this film out after geese and golden plover and using a lovely old Thomas Bland shotgun. Alex Davidson Outdoors is ferreting a horse paddock with a collie and a whippet expecting 10 rabbits, and they manage 21. Good, clear explanations of what's going on. Carsten Weidman is using a single shot rifle on a driven boar hunt. You can almost hear the howls from the Bolt Action Brigade as opportunity after opportunity opportunity literally slips through his fingers. Staying in the snow, Ian Law puts a post on Facebook about this film he made. It's an afternoon's rough shooting in Scotland after pheasants and pigeons with one good bird shot by his 11-year-old son. Joshua Finn posts his new YouTube channel on Facebook. He promises lots of hunting videos added soon. It's called All Finns Fishy and Adventurous and this is a preview. The Blood Origins channel has been taking a lead explaining hunting to the masses. This film is called The Heart of a Hunter and it asks, what are the antis thinking? Hunting Ireland is fox shooting in Ireland. Fox after fox is bolted to his gun, some at amazingly close range. And finally, normally at this time of year, the gun trade would be heading to gun fairs, but not this year. Blaza is instead presenting its new guns on YouTube, and for those with a reverential interest in gun launches, this is day one of its virtual fair. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and of course, pop your email address into our register page, which many of you have been doing as well. And we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday and continues to come out and continues to be free to watch. And I will see you next week. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>